that's the kind of fire that I feel like you need around you. Yes, sometimes you need to quit because you hear things like quitters never win. Well, I beg to differ. You're not a loser by walking away from abuse. If you're doing something that's not healthy for you, quit it. Move on to the next thing. You don't quit looking for the solution. You just quit that because that's obviously not the solution. People are at sometimes is they're just afraid to walk away because what happens is when I put that out, I attract the right person into my world. It's like quality control. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the McCove Mindset Podcast. I'm Kevin McCove, and today we're sitting down with my good friend, Rick Barker. He's the former manager of Taylor Swift. He's the host of the Music Industry Blueprint Podcast, and he's a social media mentor for the American Idol contestants. This guy has given blueprints to the music industry to millions of artists across the world, and I'm really looking forward to bringing you the power of his message today in this podcast. As always, if you like what you hear, hit like, Leave a comment and subscribe. Let's get to it. What's up, Rick? Welcome to the McCove Mindset Podcast. Appreciate it. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have you on, actually. I was was getting a little nervous. Like, are we going to make it? Are we going to be able to do it? Well, as long as we both have a pulse, I don't know why it wouldn't happen. So, You know, what's crazy is that like, when I think back on it, I was like, yeah, we were really... I spent like the first two or three months of like 2021 talking to you every day for like an hour. Yeah, that's what happens when we had that little clubhouse outing uh, coming out of of uh, COVID. It was like everybody just kind of found themselves. I don't want to say bored. I think bored's the wrong word, but there was just there wasn't a lot of distraction. Right. So it was easy to show up someplace. I mean, I'd never showed up that consistent on anything, you know, whether <laughs> yeah, it's gym, whatever it is, but it was like, we really had nowhere to go. And I think what happened too is, and, and what kind of turned me off for a while is that there was just a lot of people on clubhouse front. There oh was a God. lot of people talking good talks. And then you go look at their stuff and you're like, you know what? This person doesn't know Jack or they would jump on whatever the hot topic was, you know, ISRC codes, you know, that oh, one yeah, was, that was a, the buzz one. That was the, that buzz. was, that was one where they went and got everybody scared and then started selling their services and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, there's just too much, too many people preying on folks right now. It's like, I, I just don't need it. And then people would show up every day and we would motivate them and we would take our time and, you know, we would do what we set out to do. And then we would go look and it's like, they would do nothing, but just show up there every day. Like they're a bunch of lonely people. And we were the only folks that they could talk to. So it's crazy. I think that was the reality for a lot of people. I I think for a lot of people, that was the reality is that if, if they didn't show up and, you know, get that morning dose of motivation, you know, it was kind of like, oh, well, there's no real reason for that. Yeah, but you have to do something with motivation. Right. It's like filling your gas. It's like filling your car up with gas and never turning the car on. Sure, you got a full tank. Sure, you're ready to go, but until you turn it on and actually get behind the wheel and initiate drive and put your foot on the pedal, the car, unless it's a Tesla, won't drive itself. (laughs) Right. You know, and I think a lot of people are putting their music career or their entrepreneurial spirit like like it's a Tesla, thinking that it's just automatically going to drive itself and get them to that destination when there's work that has to be done and there's a reason why most people fail is because they aren't willing to commit to the work. They think that there's some magic pill or some magic person or they're one contact away or man, if I just got on this plate or whatever the excuse is, it's just, there is no shortcuts to any of this stuff, you know? And then for people like us, the hour that I give to someone is an hour I could have been putting towards myself. It's an hour I could have been putting towards my kids. It's an hour I could have put towards my wife. It's an hour I could have put towards golf. You know, it's an hour I could have put towards anything. So what people don't understand sometimes is, yeah, it's great that you and I were showing up there every day, but if they don't do anything, it's like, I look at it as like, why am I showing up here every day? 
I don't need. What was your why? Like, well, I, know, I I have an answer for this for me, but, you know, for you, yeah. especially when it started, you know, like, what was the reason that you decided, hey, the I'm going to get up every day for, and do this? Yeah, the why for me was to, one, build brand awareness, uh, two, to commit to showing up to something every day for my own continued growth and well-being of saying, hey, if you say you're going to do something, do it. Because we all get distracted. So it was for my own working on something on my own. It says, hey, I'm going to commit to this every single day. And then actually I was hoping to build enough brand awareness where people would say, hey, let me come check out this other stuff that this guy's going on. Because I got bills to pay too. I haven't found a mortgage guy that will accept generosity yet as a form of payment. (laughs) When you find him, let me know. I will. But so it's like, it's like, so that those were those, that was my why. Commit to showing up to do something every day. Go hopefully provide enough value to someone that they would want to come and see what else it is that I do so that I can continue to you know support my family and run the business that I'm running. That's a really good why. That's like a very transparent why. I think that was actually a lot of why a lot of people were there, but maybe didn't present that. You know, like, I think for, for me, it was definitely way different. It was more like, I was I think I was one of the lonely people. You know, being a, being on stage not perf- like not being on stage, not performing, not really having like social interactions. I'm like I thrive off of that. You know, I thrive sure. around being around people and stuff and yep. not having any of that. I definitely felt like juiced out. You know, I was definitely on like a low vibrational frequency. And then like you actually having the consistency made me have consistency. Cause when you said like, Oh, I've never had consistency. I'm like, yo, me either. Not like that. Like every single it's day. Like, like that. It's like two guys that decide they're going to work out together. So they meet at the gym. They push each other to show up. They push each other when I have to be there. Cause Kevin's going to be there. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't tell him, Hey, come in. And then I, you know, it's like, so that's what was great about it. Yeah. It's like and accountability. Then, yeah, it, it, it developed that. And then what it what it did too was I've always, always been my mantra has been allow me to earn the right to make you an offer. It's like, yes, I could come in and just sell, 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 like a lot of people do. And that's what was happening with a lot of these rooms, man. People were just coming in, sell it hard, sell it hard, <laughs> sell it hard. And I'm like, no, let me earn the right. But then I think, Kevin, where I got in trouble was that I kept showing up and I kept earning, but I never made offers. So I never, quote unquote, made offers on Clubhouse ever. Maybe I should have. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe it was my fault because I had their attention. They were showing up every day. I was just assuming that they would end up on my email list, that they would end up over here and find out about it. And I think that was something that I got better at was saying, hey, while I have your attention, full transparency, here's what's up. Right. You know, I got something I want to send you. You're going to get on my list. I'm going to continue to provide value. I'm going to make an offer. If it's right, great. If not, that's cool too. But by not wanting to be like everyone else, even though I had earned the right to make those offers, I think it ended up you know, maybe financially costing a little bit in the long run, but ethically I felt good. Yeah. I think that that's About the what point. was happening. I think that's the main point. Like I value, I'm glad that you didn't like, not glad that you didn't, if it turned into, you know, lost acquired assets. Nothing's but... lost, you know, nothing's lost because lessons learned. I right. never lose anything. I always learn something Let and know. education costs money. Hopefully right. I'm getting a junior college education on the money loss and not a <laughs> Ivy League. <laughs> yeah, I I really I learned I learned so much like out of that whole experience. And I learned a lot from you. You know, cause like it's it's really, really beautiful, I think, when you when you really break it down. I wish that more artists found like the real beauty and the art of the sale. <laughs> you know, like really, honestly, I'm just like, yo, what we do, we sell, we sell, we sell services but or we sell products. Scared. Artists are scared to sell. And that's the problem is that they, when it comes to asking for the money, 
they made the same mistake that I just made through Clubhouse is I just assumed people would figure out what I needed. I just assumed it's there because they're like, hey, if he's going to show up here every day and provide value, I'll show up every day and accept the value. And he didn't ask me for nothing. So I didn't give him nothing. You know what I mean? It was like, I always tell people the, the, the solution and the problem to what's going on in your life is looking back in you in the mirror. It's like, I'm going to be the one who fixes it or I'm going to be the one who continues to let it break. So artists the same way is the mindset of the consumer, in my opinion, based off the people that I've talked with, when you've got great videos and they see you on social media and they see you on Spotify, dude, you've made it. You're loaded because the the reality, no one talks about the independent artist in the world of social media. They talk about this person made a billion dollars touring and this person sold $50 million in one day. And I'm not buying new cars. I'm not buying new watches. I'm, I'm making, I'm keeping almost what I spend for that free content that right. people want to thank me for. And it was at that day that people looked at me in a whole completely different way because of that full transparency. So what I said to them was, is I said, how can you expect people to invest in your business, like buying a t-shirt or whatever the case may be, when you are unwilling to invest in your own? Right. You attract what you are. I'll repeat that. You attract what you are. You attract what you are. Myron Golden says it the best. The freeples, the cheeples, and the preeples. There's the freeples. They just want everything for free. They expect everything for free. They're the ones jamming up your inbox, jamming up your DMs. They want the world, but they're unwilling to pay. The cheeples, they're always looking for something on the cheap. That's cool. Most people start off, you know, if you can get somebody to start as a cheeple and get them to a preeple, the preeple's the premium. The preeple's the person that comes in and after they spend 5000 with you, gives you a hug and says, thank you. Right. The cheap will say, well, what am I getting for this 5000 And how many hours are you going to spend with me? And what results should I expect to be guaranteed at the end of spending this 5000 You never hear a preeple ask for a guarantee because they know the guarantee comes from the work that they put in, not the product itself. I guarantee you that car will get you from point A to point B. It's the only guarantee I can give you. How fast you get there, it's up to you. How long it takes you to get there, that's up to you. If you even get in the freaking car, that's up to you. You know, and people that want guarantees are people that lack certainty. Preach it, Rick. Because <laughs> they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe that they'll do it. it. has nothing to do with anything else. So that's where, when I got finally got there and started with these folks, and that's where I started encouraging artists to sit there and say, listen, educate your fan. Hey, many of you have asked what's an independent artist. Let me explain kind of what that means. That means I'm the bank. That means that, you know, Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift and everybody you see on TV, they have a record team company behind them. They have money behind them. They got all these teams. They got everybody. Well, as an independent artist, that's me. So all this music that you love, the songs you're dancing to at your wedding and telling me how they changed your lives, I had to pay for those. Those videos you like, I had to pay for those. The marketing, I had to pay for everything. So people are asking how they can support me and my business. That's why I have a merch store. Right, everything I buy some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything that goes back into making the music that you guys have all told me has had an impact. Oh, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. So the moral of the story is we have to stop waiting for people to figure out what we need them to do for us. Right. And we need to tell them. We don't need to beg. We don't need to be woe is me. No one's forcing you to be an artist. This is something you chose to do. Right. You got to you know? tell people so that they know. And I think that's a good segue because I I want to tell people about the sponsor of this podcast. I'm going to take this yeah. moment to tell people about the sponsor of this podcast, which is Joy Burst. And this podcast is being brought to you by Joy Burst and the Joy Burst Talent Search. So for the Joy Burst Talent Search to enter, you can sing any song. You can sing any song you want that brings you joy, makes you feel happy, makes your heart feel good. Upload your post to TikTok or Instagram and hashtag Joy Burst Talent Search for an opportunity to win $10,000 cash. So, yeah, if 
if you are looking <laughs> to move yeah. your career forward, you know, you have to do something. You got to let people know. And since Rick said you got to let people know, I wanted to let you know that there's a real opportunity here. And there's something that you can do to try to move your career forward because you are going to have to pay for your recording. You are going to sure. be paying for getting your merch printed up or whatever. You are going to be paying for the gas to drive to your next show. And every little bit like counts, especially if you're just starting and you need to begin the process of educating your consumer. And first, you need to educate yourself because a lot of you are getting into a business you know nothing about. And there's a lot of things that need to take place on the front end of your business. So just because you can sing and have talent, you know, be careful. Go. It's like it's no different than any other job. It's like so just because somebody wants to be a doctor doesn't mean they start operating on people. <laughs> right. you know? It's like, well, I decided I want to be a doctor. So musicians, I think, well, I've decided I want to be a singer. I should be on the big stage. It's not how it works. That's not how life works. You know, that's not that's very unrealistic. But you've got to educate yourself on your business or your business will fail, period. And don't wait for somebody to come around and, and, and do it for you. Don't wait for someone to come around and give you permission to be awesome. Kevin and I are giving you permission to be awesome right now, to so go out there and be as awesome as you can be. Stop waiting around for somebody to validate you. Yeah. Uh, because who are they? You know, people come to me, Rick, would you listen to my music and tell me what you think? I'm like, dude, you're a jazz artist. I'm a 55-year-old white guy that loves hip-hop and R&B from the early 2000s. I'm not probably going to be the best guy to tell you how great your jazz song is. Go ask a jazz person. But Rick, no, but Rick, nothing. Because the worst thing you can do is get too many industry people to each give you their opinion because they're all going to be different and you're going to be spinning around. Right. You know, what do I do? Yeah, what I, I put do out? Rick said I should do this. It's like... Go to your fans. If they don't listen to it or share it, it probably sucks. So fix it. That's it. People won't share stuff that they don't like. So if so, if you're posting and you're getting engagement and nobody's sharing it, that's a little little secret that maybe it's not as good as you think it is. Right. So or maybe it's go the wrong to audience. PPT. Maybe it's Let you're pitching it to the wrong pe like your your direct your target is like the wrong place. I mean, I know for me, you know, a constant betterment. That is a mentorship in, in and of itself because it says, like, look, no matter what you go through, no matter how many ups and downs you have, like, you still right. keep going. And, like, that's the kind of fire that I feel like you need around you and people that you look to say, like, yeah, you know, I, I admire that person. I appreciate that person, you know, so. Yes, sometimes you need to quit because you hear things like quitters never win. Well, I beg to differ. Because if someone's in a relationship where they're getting the crap beat out of them, quit that relationship. You're not a loser by walking away from abuse. If you're doing something that's not healthy for you, quit it. That's it. So I, I don't believe that you never quit. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> if it's the wrong thing, you quit. If it's the wrong <laughs> right. situation, you quit. If it's you, you move on to the next thing. You don't quit looking for the solution. You just quit that because that's obviously not the solution. And that's where I think people are at sometimes is they're just afraid to, to walk away because what happens is, is when I put that out, I attract the right person into my world. The person who's going to go to my website and come learn from me already knows I'm, I, who I'm looking for. They already know who I can help. They already know who I don't want in my world. Right. So I'm going to get that out of the way right away. I'm going to go ahead and let people F you, Rick Barker, screw you. You know, I get that a lot, you know, because that's not my person. It's like quality control. I mean, Absolutely. like, and I feel like you do it in so many, all of us as humans, like we do that in so many areas of our life. We quality control, we police for like, Nobody wants to just support people because they ask. There's a lot of lot of talent out there. No shortage. I can only imagine, you know, how many emails Joyburst gets every day of quality talent. Quality. You've got to be able to compete. Get the music right. Get your message in front of the right audience. I said right audience. Kevin right. brought that up earlier. And then do everything you can to build a relationship with them because ultimately that's where 
the money comes from, the relationship. They want to support you because they believe in you and they believe in what it is that you want to do. Don't get panicked about AI and don't worry about all this other kind of crap. AI can't build relationships. AI can't create melody. And it, it's like, oh, somebody said something to me. I just ventured off on this. They were like, is AI going to replace? I said, no, the person who knows how to talk to AI and give it the best information is who's going to replace those right. other people because AI is just a tool and it's only as good as what you put into it. What comes out is based off what you put in. So, all right, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Bro. No, you were on fire. You were on fire. And I, I want to thank you, man. Seriously. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for, thank you for everything. Really. I appreciate pleasure, it. Man. I, I, I genuinely yeah. do, you know, for picking up the phone, you know, for texting back. All that stuff. Yeah. Like it matters. It's how we roll. Yeah. That's how we roll. And and also too is that had I not seen you doing the work, I would have never texted you. I would have never sent you a message with my number. Like I said, I don't need more friends. People are always like, dude, I just want to be your friend. I'm like, dude, I do not have time for the friends that I have. You know? <laughs> it's funny. Like, Facts. It's like I, I haven't seen my friend since forever, you know. But everybody right. wants to be my friend or wants to do this. It's like they're like, Rick, will you mentor me? I'm like, Yeah, I can mentor you through my courses. You know, you get to know and learn from me. And they're like, Oh, you don't do it for free? I said, No, because I spent a lot of money getting mentored by people, you know, that I've never met. It's like, right. so yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Well, I'm glad that you appreciated the hustle. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. I do. I absolutely do and did and always will. Word. Well, we're going to link. What was that link again? We'll link it in the show. Just notes. have everybody just go to my website, rickbarker.com. You, you'll either get an invite to the most recent thing I'm teaching, or you'll get an opportunity to watch an on-demand training of the most recent thing that I taught. Uh, either way, you're going to end up giving me your email address, and then you're going to be put in a nurture sequence. And then you and I are going to start building that relationship. And you can also hit me up on Instagram at Rick Barker Music. Fire. Appreciate you, Rick. Awesome, brother. Appreciate you.